The Great British Sewing Bee is unsurprisingly a British competition show about sewing. Like its cousin, The Great British Bake Off, Sewing Bee focuses on complex challenges to test the limits of a group of amateurs, to whittle them down and select the very best amateur sewist. And while the winner does not receive a cash prize, they do get something even better, bragging rights and a trophy. Wow. And this show even has a little bit of controversy. And when I say a little, I do mean truly just a little. This is mostly just a fun, wholesome show. Does my shadow look weird? Nosferatu! Oh well. The first few seasons of the show, or series as they're called in the UK, were judged by Patrick Grant and Mae Martin. And no, not queer Canadian non-binary comedian Mae Martin, but British sewing instructor at the Women's Institute and judge of the Great British Sewing Bee, Mae Martin. And then seasons four through nine are judged by Esme Young and Patrick Grant. Fashion designer Esme Young is most well known for Swanky Modes, the shop she founded with her friends Judy Dewsbury, Melanie Herberfield, and Willie Walters in 1972. Swanky Modes created the immensely popular Lycra amorphous dress that became a staple for nightclub attendees back in the 80s. The second judge, Patrick Grant, is a Scottish fashion designer and businessman and the creative director of Norton & Sons and Community Clothing. In contrast to Esme's extensive career in the industry, Patrick had no formal training in fashion and received his degree in material sciences and engineering. He has since gained his expertise by being entrenched in the tailoring and bespoke fashion world for the last 20 years. In the show and on the Great British Sewing Bee Instagram, there are also a lot of ladies who like thirst over him. Here's one comment from the Great British Sewing Bee Instagram. Should have started in his boxes and talked us through each item as he put it on. Such a swoonsome gent. It's so funny. The show is presented or like hosted by Sarah Pascoe, English actor, comedian, and writer. She has appeared on numerous British television shows, performed at the Edinburgh Fringe Festival, and has written two different books. Also, while I was looking around to find this episode, I found out that The Great British Bake Off has an American offshoot that's hosted by Ellie Kemper and Zach Cherry, which is so random. <laughs> Today I'm going to be talking about one episode from season 9 because of just the slightest bit of controversy and backlash that it received. If you do want to watch the rest of the show, I have a link in the description of where you can find the rest of the episodes. Unless you live in the UK, you will need a VPN to access the episodes. But don't worry because you can use the sponsor of today's video, Surfshark. Has this ever happened to you? You're sitting down on a chilly Friday evening, you just watched the latest Emma in the Moment video, and now you want to watch the show they recommended. You go to the BBC site to watch The Great British Sewing Bee, and all of a sudden you get a pop-up saying you can't watch it because you're outside of the UK. What do I do now? My night is ruined! But it doesn't have to be, not with Surfshark. Surfshark is a VPN or virtual private network that keeps your online activities safe by encrypting your personal information and allowing you to change your virtual location. So I can watch shows that are geo-restricted in my area? That's right! And Surfshark has more than 3,200 servers in 100 countries. So how does it work? All you need to do is toggle your location to the UK and then you can access the site. Okay, here goes nothing. Wow, now that I've virtually traveled to the UK, I can finally watch The Great British Sewing Bee and different shows and movies on Netflix like Spirited Away and It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia. And if you virtually travel to Australia, you can watch the original Mean Girls movie or the entire Lord of the Rings trilogy. Wow, I thanks. watched you pick things up and look at the prices. It's like hands serrained. Surfshark also offers top grade encryption so you can stay safe on public Wi Fi when you're working at cafes or traveling or going oh, to. Trust me, I'm never going outside again now that I can use Surfshark to access all the shows and movies that I want to watch. Okay. Anyway, secure your privacy with Surfshark. Enter coupon code in the moment for an extra three months free at surfshark.deal slash in the moment. Join with no risk with Surfshark's 30 day money back guarantee. That's in the moment for three extra months free. Welcome, Welcome to, to the, the Great, Great British Sewing Bee. Okay, so we're watching Season 9, Episode 4. This week is Reduce, Reuse, Recycle. Or Reduce, Reduce, re oh my God. Reduce, Reuse, Recycle. Recycle. Recycle? Recycle. Or Reduce, Reuse, Recycle. So the challenges for this week are zero waste trousers, tote bag upcycling, and creating an outfit out of crochet blankets. <laughs> This is episode four of the series, so at this point there are nine contestants left. Lizzie, Fav, Matthew, Asma, Tony R, Mia, Vicky, Lauren, and Tony W. For their first challenge, each contestant has three hours to make trousers, not pants. 
with a drawstring waist, two pockets in the back, and two side pockets. The idea of this challenge is that they are zero waist pants, which first means that they're using dead stock fabric from fashion houses, and second of all means that they have to cut all of the pieces of the pattern out of one piece of fabric without having any leftover pieces. Usually when you cut out a pattern from fabric, you're left with a bunch of little strips around the edges of the pieces of the pattern, but for this pattern, they're given just one shape and they have to make a bunch of calculations to figure out how to cut out all of the pieces from one single piece of fabric. So like the cut is a cut for two different pieces of the pattern, if that makes sense. Instead of cutting around a piece, it's like cutting down and then those are the two pieces. Basically, if they miscalculate any of their cuts, it'll throw off all of the pattern pieces, which is a really cool idea and a fun challenge for this show, but probably not necessary for a home sewing practice as a way of reducing waste. The waste that a single amateur sewer is going to make from just cutting their fabric out the way that they're used to is not comparable at all to the massive, massive waste of the entire fast fashion industry and the turnover and all of that. But that's a little bit too much to get into for now, so let's move on. The show also includes this really cool animation for how all of the pieces of the pants are gonna, <laughs> trousers are gonna come together. As is to be expected in shows like this, the editing always really raises the stakes a lot and adds a lot of tension that probably wasn't really there in the room. The music, the little quips that the judges and the contestants make, it's just really fun to watch something where the most stressful thing that can possibly happen is that someone sews an uneven hem. Gotta try and follow that curve. It's not that easy. Oh, has he got a tricky curve? What will he do, go slowly? I will go very slowly and I'll probably stop breathing for a while. Okay. The season at this point has a few fun, memorable characters, but probably my favorite in this episode is Tony R. He's just like so fast with the comebacks and is always like completely stressed out about whatever's going on. Something wrong. Doesn't make sense to me that. But I've got that pocket bag there and that's there. Do you always talk to yourself? Yeah, don't we all really? I'm not happy with this. I'm not happy with it. This isn't my finest hour. <laughs> Another thing I want to talk about before we move on to talking about the actual challenge is that the show uses pretty traditional like competition intense show music, but here are a few of my particular favorites. And I also really like this fun music that they use while the contestants have tea after the challenge. I've just come down from the Isle of Skye, I'm no very big and I'm awful shy. So at the end of the challenge, the judges absolutely speed run through all of their comments. You can tell from watching this that the editors are cutting some of the judges' thoughts off like mid-sentence because of the way that their intonation goes. It sounds like they're trying to continue a thought. But basically they go through all of their comments within three minutes of the show. Like I do get that there are just like a lot of people to go through, but I kind of wish that they had spent a little bit more time talking through some of them. This does just happen on competition shows though, where at the beginning of the show, they have so many more people to get through and so many more comments to make. And then compared to the end, like the last episode, there's like three people to talk about. So they can spend a lot more time with each of the individual people discussing their thoughts. Here's basically what they say. These are almost perfect. Pocket, you haven't caught him properly. Overall, I think they're pretty good. The shape of the pocket is not a curve. Tony, these look great. Really nice curve on that side. The shape of those curves is actually really very nice. Overall, they look pretty good. Your channel looks Pretty even. Pockets are very neat. And the quality of the top stitching is, is exemplary. So at this point, after watching all of this, I was like, okay, kind of boring. Everyone did just like, perfect, really good, pretty great, an amazing job. This is a competition show. There's time limits. I want to see people under pressure. I want to see people choking at the finish line. That's what this is all about, right? Then we get to fog. The hem yeah. is yeah. all over the place. Yeah, hem all over the place. And she was doomed to begin with because the fabric choice was all wrong. Okay, that's pretty good. And then next is Tony R. He was struggling a lot on this throughout. There were lots of little cutaways to him being like, oh my God, I can't figure out how to do this. I can't iron the seam this way. Oh, this is not going how I want it to be. He somehow managed to make the funniest possible mistake. So the pattern called for these back pockets to have an additional hem once they were sewn onto the pants. The fabric was cut out in this big U shape and then once, once? The fabric was cut out in this big U shape and the top 10 centimeters folded over in a nice like double hem. He just forgot to do that. 
So instead of the normal sized pockets that everybody else had, he just ended up with really, really long pockets, which is super fun. We've got a really long, long pocket. I had an absolute nightmare with those pockets today, I won't lie. Like at no point while he was sewing those on did he think, hmm, maybe these are not supposed to look like this. Another thing I want to say is the judges on the show are a very interesting combination of very, very picky and also very, very nice. Every time they say a critique, they're like, oh, did you see that one little tiny wrinkle over there? That just teeny tiniest little wrinkle on the pants? Don't even worry. It's a massive failure, but it's so slight. We could barely even tell, but also this garment is not wearable. After this challenge, it's probably no surprise that Mr. Long Pockets Tony R came in last place and Asma's extremely well-made pants came in first. Welcome to the transformation. On to the second challenge, which they call the transformation, which sounds very ominous, but really all it is is they give the contestants a bunch of canvas tote bags and they ask them to create a top out of them. I guess the inspiration for this is that this is reduce, reuse, recycle week. That was much better than my first one. And reusable tote bags are generally considered more environmentally friendly than plastic bags. They do make a comment on the show though about how reusable tote bags have a carbon footprint that is 100 times the amount of plastic bags. So they're actually only more environmentally friendly if you use them a bunch of times. So the contestants have 90 minutes to turn these bags into wearable tops. There are no restrictions or guidelines about how this top has to turn out, but interestingly enough, a lot of them go with sort of a similar shape where it's a corset style top with puffy sleeves. And I just think it's funny. They could have made anything and they're all kind of making the same thing. I'm making a puffy blouse. Plan is a corseted base with like a puffy sleeve. Because I need drama. I think these turned out really, really cool. I think the producers or whoever sourced the tote bags did a great job of finding super interesting prints and patterns and things that would pair really well together. Lizzie's is my favorite with this giant B on one side of it. And Asma's is really beautiful too with these like big sleeves. This looks like something that she intentionally like picked out the fabric for, not that she went through a bunch of tote bags and like pulled something together. I do think that both of them just had the best combination of fabrics and colors as well. And I can't believe that these used to be tote bags. I picked my favorites before I saw who the judges chose and these two did end up being the top two of the challenge. So what can I say? I got good taste. And yeah, Asma won first place again. So she's kind of slaying today. And now for the third challenge, the contestants have five hours to make full outfits out of crocheted blankets. They apparently sourced these blankets themselves from charity shops, but one of the contestants actually brought in a blanket that they received as a gift for the birth of their son. They want the blankets to go from warm to warm. For this challenge, they do a really fun Great British Bake Off style interview where they talk about the plans of each of the sewers. Sewists? The show keeps saying sewers, but that feels wrong. Sewers? Sewers. Sew sewists. Contestants. Hooray! They do an interview with each of the contestants about their plans. It's really interesting to see all of their designs like mocked up like this and to see them talking about the garment and knowing that a lot of them have really good understanding of how crochet fabric works and crochet stitches work. Mia's box jacket and miniskirt will feature symmetrical granny squares. And how are you finishing the neckline? If I've got time, crochet a line around the neck. And almost all of the contestants have crochet abilities themselves, which is really cool to see. Some of the sewers are deploying their own crochet skills. It's very segregated at the moment. At least me and Laura are not part of the crochet club. And I think it gives them a huge advantage in this challenge, obviously, of being able to understand how to cut the fabric so that it doesn't unravel and being able to add little bits in there if they need to with their crochet hook. This challenge more so than the other ones, even though they have five hours to complete this, people are really struggling to finish. This is terrifying. They're like running around like crazy trying to get things done. Some of them are also struggling to get the crocheted fabric through the sewing machine, which makes sense because crochet fabric is very bulky. But after all of that, after all the craziness, all of these turned out really, really well. My personal favorites from this challenge are Lauren's and Mia's. Mia's is just like really chic and really cool. And again, I have good taste because Mia's won Garment of the Week, which is kind of the same as Star Baker in the Great British Bake Off. And Mia winning this challenge is not super surprising considering the fact that she showed up to the filming day wearing a crochet outfit. She gets some really nice feedback from the judges on her finished outfit. And Esme even says that it looks like a Chanel suit. 
So at the end of the episode, Matthew ended up being the one to go home because he really struggled with his execution of several of the projects this week, but especially with his final crochet dress. And he leaves the show with a really sweet message. Kids these days, they need to see otherness. Nothing more other than this little weirdo. Ooh. Okay, so yeah, I mentioned earlier in the video that there was a little bit of drama. Because I need drama. And like I said, it wasn't it wasn't really a huge deal, and you can probably guess what it was, but after this episode aired, there was a handful of disgruntled crocheters who were offended that the show had used crochet blankets as fabric for the challenge. Some of them expressed their disgust. As someone who primarily crochets blankets and knows how much time and effort they take to make, that third Great British Sewing Bee Challenge was both interesting and horrifying to watch. I normally would be watching the entire show, but as I knit and crochet, I found watching people's hard work be cut up for an outfit too painful to watch, and I have turned off to watch something else. These blankets will have taken a lot of time to make. It could have been a couple of months or more work from the crocheter. And I have two counter arguments to this. One, yes, of course crochet blankets take a lot of work to make. I myself have never successfully finished a blanket. I have a half blanket somewhere, my half temperature blanket from 2022. Sorry, I shouldn't have done one. I, I can't, I haven't made a blanket yet, okay? They take a lot of work. But if these blankets were sourced from charity shops or secondhand stores, then they were not with their original owners to begin with. Regardless of if they were once intended to be heirlooms or not, at this point in time, they were not going to be used by the people they were made for. This challenge gives these blankets that, yes, were painstakingly made, the chance to be out and about in the world again in a new way. My second point is that the contestants in this show clearly have a great knowledge of and respect for crochet itself. And although I don't really think it's serious enough to have to be like, oh, you have to respect the craft if you want to be able to take a crochet blanket and turn it into something else, I do think it adds a really nice layer to see them carefully cutting along the rows, unraveling stitches, and adding borders to things for structural integrity. It just shows that they're taking all of the skills available to them and upcycling the piece into something new. I remember seeing a few reels about this last year and the comments being very divided on this as well. Hmm, I feel like this could be better. But yeah, I really do think it's better to get use out of an item rather than let it just sit at the thrift store or even worse, get sent to the landfill because nobody buys it. But then again, I also have committed the crime of unraveling sweaters from the thrift store and I think that's okay. And people have told me that they really hate what I'm doing with that. So who am I to say? You can have your own opinion on if that is, you know, should be illegal or not. But personally, I think it is making great use of things that we already have in the world, which was the whole point of reduce, reuse, recycle week to begin with. My final thoughts, this is a really fun show. I really liked seeing how creative the contestants were with the time limits given, and I thought all of them turned out with amazing results. And unlike The Great Knit Off, where I bawled my eyes out and the contestants had to share really heartfelt stories about their lives, this show was really just nice, light-hearted fun. The contestants who wanted to bring a little personal story in here or there could, but they didn't have to for the challenge. So yeah, my review for this show is that it was really fun, and I will be watching the rest of this season and keeping my eye out for season 10. I can't believe it took me until this year to hear about this show. I watched The Great British Bake Off a ton during like 2020 and 2021, and I'm surprised that I didn't like somehow stumble upon this show too, but it's great. And like I said, there's nine seasons, so there's a lot of there's a lot of content for you to go through if you're looking for something else to watch. Had you heard of this show before? Have you seen it? Are there any seasons that were your favorite that you think I should watch? Were there any challenges that had particularly interesting results or something else noteworthy that I should know about? I don't know. Let me know. I'm, I'm down to watch some more. So, but that's kind of it for this one. But before I go, did you know that 68% of the people who watch my videos are not subscribed? What, are you scared or something? Are you scared that if you subscribe, you'll have so much fun and you won't ever miss any of my videos? I mean, I, yeah, I'm kidding. But also, if you like watching my videos and you watch all of them, then just subscribe anyway. It doesn't hurt. But if not, that's okay. It's fine. It's fine. Either way, I'll see you around. I'll, I'll, still, I'll find you. My videos will find you either way. You can find me on Patreon if you want to support me financially, but if not, that's also fine. It's great. Just like the video. Thanks for being here, and I'll see you next time. Bye. <laughs>